I'm author and athlete Brad Kearns. Welcome to the Be Rad Podcast, where we explore ways to pursue peak performance with passion throughout life. Visit bradkearns.com for great resources on healthy eating, exercise, and lifestyle. And here we go with the show. Literally what's happening with a short nap, even if you don't fall asleep, is you are refreshing the sodium potassium pumps that help the brain neurons fire. The least you can do is create a sanctuary from stress that is your bedroom. How do you know that you're doing a good job here? Uh, Dr. Rosenberg mentioned the word congruent and you're congruent when your thoughts, feelings, words, and actions match up. Welcome to the fifth and final episode in the wonderful series of five tips to age gracefully and optimize energy and body composition. We're going to talk about stress management in this final show, putting all the pieces together after the great content that we covered with the logistics of diet and exercise. So in part one, we talked about cleaning up your act, getting rid of the toxic, nutrient-deficient, processed modern foods that are dragging you down, ruining your energy, your metabolism. And once you clean up your diet, you can proceed to part two, where we talked about pursuing a diet of maximum nutrient density as expressed by the Carnivore Scores Food Rankings Chart. Please download that for free at bradkearns.com, print it out, put it on your refrigerator. So you are making the best choices in every category of wholesome, natural, nutrient-dense foods, meat and fruit for a nickname, and learn more with the chart. But we are avoiding processed foods. We are eating the wholesome, nutritious foods and striving for maximum cellular energy status. And then we go into part three, which covered the critical objective of increasing all forms of general everyday movement. I talked about my morning exercise routine. I talked about the centerpiece objective of just finding more ways to walk in everyday life, obligatory walking opportunities. Uh, Importantly, taking quick breaks from prolonged periods of stillness to just get up and move around instead of being stuck in front of a screen all day. Uh, Of course, we have the formal cardiovascular training sessions conducted at appropriate aerobic heart rate, comfortable heart rate, and then a variety of other complementary movement practices such as formal Uh, yoga, Pilates sessions, even foam rolling counts as movement, even going from stand-up desk to sit-down desk. So that brought us to part four, which is to integrate brief, intense, high-intensity exercise and resistance exercise. So you're putting your muscles under resistance load regularly and preserving lean muscle mass throughout life as the number one way to cope with the disastrous decline into accelerated aging that is so common today. So we have to work those muscles, use it or lose it, as well as perform explosive activities such as sprinting and jumping, doing things that are very short in duration and asking for near all-out effort. And those will send the appropriate hormonal and genetic signaling to keep you healthy, strong, energetic throughout life. You have to use it or lose it And if you don't put your muscles under resistance load, if you uh, are doing plenty of low intensity exercise, but never challenging your body for a truly maximum effort, you are only getting a few slices of the pie that in total contributes to that long, healthy, happy, energetic life. And I know there's a lot of fitness enthusiasts out there that are devotedly heading to the gym or using their home exercise equipment to pedal along for 45 minutes while they watch TV. Uh, But this critical additional component of just once in a while going for it and really challenging yourself. And if you can't do it in high impact manner, you go and uh, pedal a bicycle and do some short sprints. That's vastly better conditioning and fitness stimulation to just going slow all the time. Uh, But again, if you're out there getting your cardio, you're hitting objective number three. So that's great. We're just striving for optimal here and to cover all the bases. So we have our regular movement, then we have our intensity, and then it brings us to stress management. And there are so many things we could talk about here and have done so many shows on things that could uh, qualify as stress management. But let me uh, focus the discussion on a few important things, especially as it relates to the previous tips. So when we're talking about getting your cardio and your daily movement, and then you're doing your resistance exercise and you're sprinting, 
uh, the big factor is to avoid overly stressful exercise patterns. And there's a small segment of the population, the small but devoted, uh, the extreme fitness enthusiasts have a huge problem in this area because many people are out there well-meaning, well-intentioned, and enjoying the experience, but pushing their bodies too hard. Uh, I'm going to largely blame it on the traditional fitness programming, where you walk into the facility to participate in a group exercise session, and the emphasis is on fun, energy, camaraderie, good music, getting a sweat, uh, feeling like you accomplished something, and that's all wonderful. That's so much better than sitting on the couch. But if you start to take further steps down that path and get into the a group training club that's training for the local marathon or the the bicycling group that gets out there on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, or when you're really a devotee of these group exercise classes and you're going five mornings a week, or you're signing up for the wonderful programming offered at CrossFit, but you're heading there day after day and getting a little competitive juices flowing, it can very easily turn into something That is a net negative for your lifestyle and your longevity prospects because it is overly stressful. And I talk about my experience as a professional triathlete often where I dedicated those nine years of my life when I raced on the circuit, traveled all over the world on jet airplanes, trained really, really hard every day and competed in, you know, the the most uh, intense and challenging circumstances. Overall, that experience accelerated the aging process in my body. And I've been trying to make up for it ever since with healthy lifestyle practices. So we have to be constantly aware of that cutoff point where your fitness endeavors now start to compromise uh, your health, your longevity prospects, your enjoyment of life. There's so much uh, disturbing information, especially about the extreme endurance athletes who have been going for decades and decades. And now there are increased incidences of heart problems amongst the fittest members of the population. They have uh, high coronary artery calcium scores indicating uh, repeated scarring and damage to the delicate lining of the uh, arteries in the heart. Um, We have an epidemic rate of joint replacement where people are getting new knees and new hips at a frequency that's vastly increased from only 10 years ago or 20 years ago. And again, the more this stuff becomes routine and commonplace, the more we're going to settle in and believe, form the belief that it's routine and commonplace to, for example, develop a spare tire after you hit age 45 and it's just going to linger there for the rest of your life and you're going to lose some shirt sizes or pant sizes because your muscles are going to atrophy. All this stuff is commonplace, but it's not normal or necessary. It's just a, uh, a function of adverse lifestyle practices. And so one of those adverse lifestyle practices is taking things too far and you can benefit so much if you're in that category of extreme fitness enthusiasts from just backing off. So if you take down your CrossFit participation to twice a week, and if you like the camaraderie uh, at the fitness facility, then go there and uh, volunteer and help out novices or just tone down the degree of difficulty by 50% for a a couple few of your Uh, workouts per week. And then you're going to start to realize how good it feels to progress with your fitness without that constant interruption caused by uh, blowing out your hormones, uh, getting uh, muscle and joint injuries that put you on the sideline and all that uh, stuff that I covered in the, the part three and part four, where we're talking about moving frequently at a slow pace and then conducting appropriate type of resistance workouts and sprint workouts. And so avoiding overly stressful exercise, that brings us to the next one on the list of avoiding overly stressful work habits. And today, like no other time in the history of humanity, we have the ability to be constantly stimulating and challenging our brain with inputs, with uh, distractions, uh, with opportunities to be more and more productive because now we have a mobile device, so we're never away from our email inbox or from telephone contact, and we can problem solve uh, work-related issues deep into the night and wake up the next morning and hit it hard again. And people get lured into this type of lifestyle because it is so competitive and there's so many, uh, so much messaging uh, challenging us and pushing us and luring us into the new technology and the new behavior patterns that's going to contribute to 
uh, the advancement of society and all that's wonderful. It's better than uh, sitting on a rock all day, right? But we have to strive for balance and we have to use extreme discipline and focus to develop the skills such as powering down at certain times. And boy, I have my uh, checkpoint for my afternoon nap that if I detect a slight decline in cognitive performance, I am slamming that laptop lid shut and I am taking a break. A 20 minute nap can have a tremendous restorative effect. Uh, literally what's happening with a short nap, even if you don't fall asleep, is you are refreshing the sodium potassium pumps that help the brain neurons fire. And so when you complain of being fried after a tough, stressful day, that statement is literally true because when the sodium potassium pumps get depleted, they interfere with the healthy uh, electrical signaling of the brain neurons. And so you actually have fried your brain neurons and you need a break. You need to close your eyes, get into a dark uh, environment, put on some uh, meditation music or even an app that's taking you through a guided meditation and get away from the hyperconnectivity and the constant potential for stimulation and distraction. So uh, building in a variety of strategies so that this happens easily for you is a very valuable suggestion. For example, when I talk about my morning exercise routine and my devoted habit of doing this first thing in the morning every single day, no matter what, my streak is now heading up to six years without missing a single day. So I know that the first hour of my day, every single day, I am not going to have a mobile device in hand to catch up on my exciting emails or otherwise be um, lured into anything except for a uh, contribution to my physical fitness as well as my mental health because I'm out there in the fresh air, uh, the exposure to uh, direct sunlight and setting my hormones, getting energized naturally, vastly better than even a cup of coffee because whenever I finish my morning exercise routine, I always feel better. I always feel alert and energized. And so that is a built-in way to prevent me from engaging with the screen too frequently and turning my brain into reactive mode first thing in the morning. It's very difficult to recover from that. That's a quote from the behavior psychologist, Nicole Benders Hadi, and the research about how we reach for our mobile devices first thing in the morning, and then we get locked into this reactive brain mode where we are reacting to stimulus rather than being thoughtful, strategic, and proactive in our thinking and so if you want to start your day with physical exercise, I highly recommend that. And if that's not quite your thing, you can get up, uh, make yourself a cup of tea and get out a blank piece of paper and go over your uh, intentions and your to-do list for the day. Maybe it's your gratitude journal that you want to write a few pages in. But I strongly recommend building in opportunities for physical exercise to counterbalance all the time that we engage with machines these days. And that will help keep you away from overly stressful work habits. Because when we have to use willpower over and over and over again to keep us away from the temptation of the mobile device, what happens is that skill erodes over time. And there's even research that it erodes over the course of the day, which is why morning is the best time to wire in new habits. That's when you have a lot of uh, focus, discipline, motivation, and willpower. And then as people punch away at it throughout the day, that's when things can unravel in the evening and you spend too long on uh, social media scrolling. Uh, you spend too long on looking for a show to watch because you just can't make a big uh, resilient decision and so on and so forth. So uh, get things started the right way at the start of the day. And the other thing I contend that my morning exercise habit has done has helped uh, those skills of focus, discipline, resilience, and habit forming carry over into all other forms of stress, distraction, and temptation that I face throughout the day. So number one, avoid overly stressful exercise. Number two, avoid overly stressful work habits, build in ways for you to succeed on that level. Uh, another one that just came to mind is, hey, if you're uh, uh, volunteered to be the assistant coach on your kid's soccer team, and you guys practice on Tuesday and Thursday at 4.30 p.m., guess who's not going to be uh, dragging ass and working too late those two nights of the week? 
So you have built-in obligations and things that help balance your life. Same with social opportunities for the weekend hike or meeting uh, Wednesday at noon at the park to take a lap around there and being accountable to someone else. All those things are wonderful. And that brings us to uh, the big one for stress management, which is sleep. And we have certainly uh, mountains of content on this subject. Uh, pretty much everyone has the knowledge and awareness of the importance of sleep. But again, we can often fall short with execution and that can be righted by focusing on uh, some of the most important attributes of good sleep habits. Uh, One is your sleeping environment. So your bedroom, you want to make that a really special place that's simple, austere. There's no clutter. There's no stress provoking uh, visuals there like a pile of unfinished paperwork where research shows that even looking at something can provoke a stress response in the body, such as an unfinished home improvement project. And you walk by the ceiling fan wiring and the uh, the new uh, paddles that you're supposed to change out because it's in the corner of your bedroom. Walking by and looking at it will provoke a stress response. So the least you can do, if you can't get all your home improvement projects finished, okay, we're going to work on that next month. But the least you can do is create a sanctuary from stress that is your bedroom. The other attributes are you want it to be, uh, besides austere, cool, uh, the potential for total darkness or maximum amount of darkness as you can muster. That means getting rid of all these annoying little LED lights that uh, are often accompanied with uh, electric devices. So the little green light that shows the power on or especially annoying when you're in a hotel room and the the sprinkler thing on the ceiling has a green light to show that it's working. I usually take black electrical tape and try to tape up all these annoying things or I put the, uh, the digital clock, I just put it face down onto the table so it doesn't have to shine into the environment. I did an entire show uh, talking about the uh, circadian rhythm Uh, inspired by the content on Dr. Jack Cruz's website where he talked about what's going on uh, at every hour of the day in terms of your hormones, in terms of the best time to exercise, uh, especially the overnight sleep period and how important that is for the release of human growth hormone and the repair and restoration processes that are so delicate and sensitive to light that they can be easily interrupted. Um, There's research that just flipping on a bright light switch to uh, visit the bathroom in the middle of the night will suppress melatonin, which we want to have flowing through our bloodstream while we're sleeping. So if you do have to get up in the middle of the night or have any sort of um, concerns about emergencies or popping up to tend to children or uh, aging dogs, get a red flashlight on Amazon, have that by your bedside. Do not reach for your phone and check what time it is because again, that can provoke a stress response whether you thought it was earlier in the night or it's closer to wake up time. We just want to get through the night in a peaceful manner. Um, The temperature is super important too. Recommended sleeping temperature is 60 to 68 degrees. And then of course, you want that mattress to remain cool all night. That's why it's uh, so nice to have these wonderful technologies. I'm testing out an eight sleep mattress right now. It's super awesome because when you get into that cold mattress, it facilitates falling asleep because the body actually has to drop a temperature or two in degrees in order to fall asleep. So you want your body temperature to drop just like when we went into the cave in the old times, uh, lower body temperature facilitates good sleep. But at the same time, we don't want our skin temperature to get too cold because that will wake us up and make us uncomfortable. So the key to good sleep is cool room temperature, cool mattress temperature maintained the whole night, instead of your body warming up the mattress temperature and then creating an overly warm environment. So we want cool room, cool mattress temperature, and then warm enough, uh, sufficiently warm skin temperature. How do you get that? You get it from covers and you get it from your chosen pajama slash cover ratio. And of course, that's going to change over the course of the year, but that is the winning ticket. And you probably already figured that out. It feels good to get under the warm covers but not into too warm of a bed where you're going to have difficulty falling asleep. So uh, check out 8sleep.com. See the offerings they have and learn more about the technology to uh, keep your your mattress cool as well as the uh, room temperature. I should also mention that we want quiet. And so if you have uh, outside noises that can potentially disrupt your sleep, 
you can use any form of white noise to kind of block that out. I love using my uh, HEPA filter and air purifier, and I turn that on high at nighttime. So that is the background noise, and that will drown out any potential abrupt noise like a uh, dog barking or a siren or whatever. Uh, the abrupt noises are the ones that are going to disturb our sleep. But if you have steady, what they call white noise, uh, some people call it pink noise. There's different uh, definitions, but it's any steady noise that is emitted by a fan or a machine or your smartphone. Uh, you can get a nice app. I use this for napping during the daytime. I just turn on the raindrops and boy, it is like a trigger for me to fall asleep when it's time to take a short nap. And it also prevents me from uh, the exposure to uh, the many much greater potential for noise while I'm trying to nap versus uh, at nighttime when things generally quiet down for most people, hopefully. And so that is the sleep environment. And then the other component of a good night's sleep is to engage in uh, wind down evening rituals as you're approaching the time to go to sleep. You want to do things that are mellow. You want to darken your home environment as much as possible and progressively more so as you approach the hour to go to sleep. Um, the great books by Arianna Huffington, Thrive and the Sleep Revolution. Those are two of her books. She talks a lot about the importance of sleep and sleep rituals and talking about how um, certain clothes, certain behaviors like lighting a candle and going into the bathtub, uh, tell your brain that it's okay to come down off high stress mode that you were in the whole day because now uh, what the bathtub represents and the candles and the quiet reading in bed, it represents uh, the approaching of time to fall asleep and cycle optimally through all phases of sleep. It's not as easy, for example, to slam out a few shows in your Netflix queue and then turn off the remote control and immediately go to bed and try to retire. Your brain does not work as efficiently. It needs those evening wind down rituals. One of my favorite ones is to go outdoors and get some fresh air, even if it's cold. Again, we're trying to drop the body temperature a little bit in preparation for sleep. So leash up your dog and go for a five minute walk out in the, the dark and the cold. Yeah, it's okay. You'll survive, I promise. And then go back in and then that's going to be uh, your final kick to uh, retire to the bedroom, take the slippers off, get under the covers and go for it. Okay, so uh, sleep rituals and sleep environment and going on the heels of that on the next bullet point, I will call this rest, recovery and downtime. And as I mentioned, with especially the uh, the advent of the mobile device, we have the opportunity now to uh, get rid of any downtime and remain productive and stimulated uh, from every waking hour. And I do mean every waking hour, as I've talked about when I talk about my morning exercise routine. Uh, the recent research from Adweek survey uh, suggests that 84% of Americans reach for their mobile device as their first act upon awakening. And I would venture to guess if we had more research that most people are handling that mobile device as their last act before going to sleep. And during the rest of those waking hours, um, raise your hand if you're listening and you're someone who likes to sit on your front porch in the rocking chair and chat casually and watch the world go by just like your parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents did for generations. Yeah, we've kind of done away with that because now we have the uh, the amazing uh, entertainment options with uh, streaming content and whatnot. And so um, not to, you know, criticize modern life out of hand because I too love to engage in um, the stimulation and entertainment options and customize entertain entertainment options that we get from uh, streaming content. Uh, but the idea here is that we do require some downtime for the brain and we require some recovery time from our crazy daily schedule. Um, athletes know this, but I think all of us might want to take a step back and realize that maybe there are seasons of the year or um, uh, times of the week. That's why we invented weekends where we have to go with that ebb and flow. And so we're going to go, go, go for however long. And then we're going to take vacations. We're going to take weekends and we're going to take off seasons from whatever we're usually grinding at day after day after day. Okay, and that brings us to the last item on the list. Why don't I throw in there relationship skills and relationship health? Because it is really a make or break attribute of stress management, of happiness, health, longevity, 
uh, research reference. Was it by John Gray during our shows? Or maybe it was uh, John and Julie Gottman uh, that a healthy marriage will add seven years of life expectancy and a dysfunctional marriage will take off a similar amount. So in terms of the pendulum swinging, there's nothing comparative. It's more of a risk factor than smoking. Um, it's a more of a winning factor than exercise. Seven years is, is a ridiculous uh, uh, a stat when you think about uh, in comparison, like the difference between eating healthy and eating a junk food diet is only adding a few years to your life. Of course, it's adding to the quality of life, which is the main reason that you want to optimize your health practices. But uh, again, we're looking at a make or break situation when it comes to healthy relationship skills and uh, had a lot of content about that. I love my shows with John Gray, those life-changing shows, and especially my uh, summary episode. If I'm going to point you to one right now, it was uh, titled The Essential Male and Female Relationship Assignments. So you just have your marching orders in order to be a good partner and things that you need to honor and be aware of. And so this awareness of our emotions, awareness of our programming Wendy Walsh had some great content about this when she was talking about understanding your attachment style that you developed over the course of your life in your younger years and how that plays out and how we repeat patterns in modern day relationships. We're trying to overcome some uh, uh, adverse programming from long ago. And uh, I just heard a great show with Dr. Joan Rosenberg, author of a book called 90 Seconds to Live a Life You Love. And she said, that once you make sense of your past, especially your past traumas and difficulties, once you make sense of it all, it loses, they, they lose their power. They lose their power to, to ruin your life in present day. And then when they lose their power, then you are easily able to forgive yourself and start forming a new identity, an aspirational identity of who you would like to become. And how do you do that? Uh, you start looking around and seeing positive attributes that you appreciate in others and wish you could be like that, wish you could maintain uh, that sense of being cool, calm, and collected like John Gray urges as the essential male assignment in relationship. And so maybe you have a role model for that or a dream of that, and you understand why you're so, uh, why you have such a quick trigger uh, because of whatever uh, wounds and scars that you're carrying with you. So you want to get to understanding, and then you get to progress forward with that understanding. And how do you know that you're doing a good job here? Uh, Dr. Rosenberg mentioned the word congruent, and you're congruent when your thoughts, feelings, words, and actions match up. Pretty interesting concept. Uh, it hit home for me because I realized sometimes uh, maybe I'm able to control my emotions when I encounter a jerk on the street or a difficult uh, interaction with someone in a, um, a personal setting or a business setting. I'm able to remain really calm, cool, and collected uh, on the phone call or in person when uh, shit's getting real, but inside I'm grinding my teeth and feeling like I'm going to scream. And so it's better than uh, uh, actually screaming and uh, you know losing control of your emotions in real time, uh, but I feel like the ideal progression from there is to also be able to control your internal triggers so you don't have such a stressful day by trying to have to control your emotions every time you get triggered left, right, and upside down because you're carrying a lot, carrying around a lot of flawed programming. Get it? So in that example, my thoughts, my feelings, my words, and my actions all match up. And she talks about how it's okay to um, dispense feedback. So if you're angry, um, the the recommendation of expressing yourself is really important to honor. Uh, however. It's possible and it's essential to dispense all feedback uh, in a positive, kind, and well-intentioned manner. Ooh, how's that for cramming a ton of relationship insights into a couple minutes? Yeah, a lot to think about there. And once you start to improve your skills, you can use them under pressure. And when you do that a few times, then you build new neural circuitry to become that person that you wish you could become, right? So you have to practice, you have to perform under pressure, and then you build more confidence and more comfort that you do have the possibility of living a different life than uh, the life that sometimes frustrates you and annoys you. 
So there you go. That is um, number five on the list of stress management tools of honing your relationship skills and your emotional self-sufficiency. Uh, so going backward from there was rest, recovery, and downtime. Then we talked about sleep, your sleep environment, and your evening habits. Uh, we talked about avoiding overly stressful work habits, getting the skill of powering down and building in other commitments and behaviors and habits that uh, prevent you from overworking. And then back up to the top where we talked about avoiding overly stressful exercise. Too much of a good thing is definitely a uh, big time trouble there. And that is a five part show. Number one, clean up your act, ditch the junk food. Number two, emphasize nutrient dense meals. Number three, find ways to move more frequently in everyday life. Number four, integrate brief high intensity exercise. And number five, work on your stress management. Thank you so much for listening to the five part package tips to age gracefully and optimize energy and body composition through life. Love to know your thoughts and feelings about how some of this stuff has worked for you. Please email us at podcast at bradventures.com. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the show. I love sharing the experience with you and greatly appreciate your support. Please email podcast at bradventures.com with feedback, suggestions, and questions for the Q&A shows. Subscribe to our email list at bradkearns.com for a weekly blast about the published episodes and a wonderful bi-monthly newsletter edition with informative articles and practical tips for all aspects of healthy living. You can also download several awesome free ebooks when you subscribe to the email list. And if you could go to the trouble to leave a five or five star review with Apple Podcasts or wherever else you listen to the shows, that would be super incredibly awesome. It helps raise the profile of the BRAD podcast and attract new listeners. And did you know that you can share a show with a friend or loved one by just hitting a few buttons in your player and firing off a text message? My awesome podcast player called Overcast allows you to actually record a soundbite excerpt from the episode you're listening to and fire it off with a quick text message. Thank you so much for spreading the word. And remember, be rad.